Hello, everybody. I'm here with uh, Matthew Dotson from uh, Slime Tutorials. How are you, Matthew? Good. How are you doing, Ryan? Great. Great. Um, okay. So let me let me tell you how I found you on okay. in on Instagram. Yep. Um, well, I was I I often like kind of go down the rabbit hole trying to find new surf bands, and I saw Slime Tutorials, and I'm like, wait a minute. And uh, 10 years ago, to me, that would have meant, you know, the, the slime tutorial. Because yep. like, my daughter used to watch it like crazy. And she yeah. used to get the slime. And So, first of all, tell me what the concept is. So, uh, my music is surf rock, but I cover a lot of Broadway songs and pop songs. Oh. And so, in the Broadway world, if you uh, record, like, a bootleg recording, let's say you go see Wicked, the musical, if you upload that to YouTube and you call it Wicked, it'll get taken down for copyright uh, takedowns. But if you say it's a slime tutorial about a green witch, then it'll stay up. So it's kind of this copyright um, uh, feature that like fans put on YouTube so they don't get caught. Interesting. And so for whatever reason, I think it's because those slime tutorial videos were so popular, there's like a million of them, yeah. that some person said, well, hey, if I call my uh, Broadway video a, a slime tutorial, it'll never get taken down. So it's kind of play on a play on words with that because it's slimy. So it kind of sounds creepy, which is good for surf rock. But I'm also covering yeah. Broadway songs and pop songs. I wanted to bring together two really different genres, surf rock and Broadway, which is <laughs> like never been done. So that's kind of the, the play on words there with the title slime tutorials. That is uh, not only is the. Uh... The name interesting and the story behind it, yeah. the the combination of genres. Um, right. What do you have? A, do you have a background in in Broadway, like 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 theater that that made you say, you know, you know, I love this music and I think this would go great with my passion about surf music. Well, I've always liked surf. I started playing guitar when I was fourteen, like in high school, and I was also in band at the same time. So they were always making us see musicals. Mm -hmm. um, play musicals in band and so I only got the idea a few years ago uh, I really like the band ABBA as well mm. which they have that musical Mamma Mia so I had the idea man if I could cover the whole ABBA greatest hits album in a surf rock style I think people would like that which I still want to do that but uh, that's where the idea came from but uh, yeah I've always liked musicals and I've always liked surf rock and so I thought hey let's combine them I listened to uh some of your music, um, little snippets on uh, Instagram, but I searched and I couldn't find <laughs> any, any releases. Do you have maybe some some uh, info or where people can hear you? Yeah, I'm on all streaming sites. I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, which I, I realized, you know, the whole calling myself the slime tutorials, it's kind of backfired because you can't find it on YouTube, which is kind of the joke. Yeah. Even though I spelled it with a, a Z, tutorials with a Z. But that's kind of the joke, I guess, is you can't find it on YouTube easily. But it is on Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora. I use um, what's called CD Baby to distribute my oh, music. Yeah. Yeah. So they put it on everything. Oh, that's great. Yeah, now, but it is hard to find because of the name, which I didn't consider. So <laughs> so far, um, a lot of bands talk about band camp and or independent record labels um but nobody on the show has mentioned cd baby in a, um ever on our show so i want you to explain how cd baby works for the artist okay well you create an account you upload your songs your album art the songwriters in my case these are all cover songs so i uh well let me preface this you got to go use this thing called easy song licensing so if you're covering a song, you got to get the license for it first. So I do that first. You have to pay like 20 bucks per song you want to cover. Then you go to CD Baby. Wow. You upload. Yeah. You upload all the song information. <clears throat> then you press, uh, you know, if you want to monetize it or not. Because these are cover songs, I can't monetize it apparently. But then you select all the services that you want to stream on, like Spotify, Apple, and then like a million ones you've never heard of before. Then you press submit, and then it has to go into uh, the queue, which is like their waiting line. So it okay. might take them a week or so to actually review it. Then once it's reviewed, 
they'll uh, they'll st- they'll send it out to all the sites. So if you want to upload a song, let's say in the middle of uh, July, you better upload it to CD Baby like uh, you know a few weeks before that because the whole thing can kind of take a while. Okay. So, now do you get then, you get yeah. CDs pressed as well? No, I haven't done that yet. Okay. It's just purely digital at this point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I think I cut you off there. Oh no, you're okay. Oh okay. Um. So sign tutorials. Is this your baby or is this a full band at the time? Oh, it's just me. I do everything in this room actually that I'm in right now. So I play the guitars, bass, drums, keyboards, and then I also record it all, mix it all, master it all. So it's all. It's just a one man project. I I think people might be interested in what you use to record like what software yeah and, and like plugins and stuff yeah i use um ableton live 11. i'm not sure if that's the latest version or not but that's the kind i have i have the uh the focus uh scarlet 18i20 that's my interface so it allows me to plug in eight microphones at a time which i don't need that many but it's cool to have that and then <clears throat> i try to do as many effects as possible just with real like uh guitar pedals but i do like the built-in effects in ableton live um, they have some really good delays and echoes that i really like because you can kind of get that bouncing stereo effect really easily i also have uh the waves plugin suite that i've been paying like 26 bucks a month for which i've been considering canceling it just because i don't really use it that much but it has like 100 plugins that you can use some that are really cool like a renaissance bass that one's pretty good it makes your bass sound louder without actually making it louder so that one's really cool um but uh yeah it's all ableton live built in uh like you know effects and stuff like that and then it's all in this room so i have this little microphone here i uh with my uh i'll do the a rig review uh video oh, too for, so you guys can check out i'll kind of show you all my guitars and amps but awesome. uh, i have a fender blues junior that's my go-to amp i, I turn the spring reverb almost all the way up I have a Fender Strat that I use for most of my stuff because of the whammy bar. Uh, I really want to get a Jazzmaster, though, because that's kind of where the true yeah. sound is at. And I just, I want to get one, so I've been looking at it. But now, uh, do you go with Squire or a straight Fender? Uh, yeah, I have a Fender, like an uh, American-made Fender. But okay. also, I don't know if you've heard of this brand called Harley Benton. They're, uh, no. they're, the, they're super cheap guitars. Like, you can buy a new one for... Like 150 bucks, and then you got to pay like 80 bucks shipping because they're from Germany. Is where they hold them. That's crazy. I've been I've been collecting those like crazy. I just bought this. Um, it's like a Fender Bass Six, but it's a Harley Benton. Mm-hmm. So I want to feature that on some new stuff because that's cool. You got like almost like the baritone kind of guitar. Um, I don't know if you've seen that uh, Beatles Get Back documentary, but they're playing the Fender Bass Six, which I never realized. It's kind of for people who don't know it's like a, a bass guitar but it's shaped like a guitar all the strings are like really like close together okay so um yeah that's kind of my equipment but awesome. uh, yeah i do it i do it all in this room i'm in right here you can see my my drum set right behind yeah. me there there's some uh there's some bands who start out um as as like one one guy or, or girl that mm-hmm. that writes and puts everything together and then eventually they get to the point where enough people are enjoying their music and they're like, hey, when are you going to play a show? And like, you're like, well, you know, this is just kind of what I do. Like, mm-hmm. have you ever thought about maybe branching out and, and playing some shows either, you know, by yourself, which a lot of people put make loops and then they, mm-hmm. play, they play by themselves or like, uh, I'm sure you have friends in, in the music uh, world. Yeah, I'd love to play live. It's uh, it is hard. Yeah, when you're the one man band, I've thought about doing things where I just like maybe export my songs, but remove the lead guitar part, so I could just you know use my song as a backing track and play the guitar live. Mm-hmm. I've thought about doing that, but yeah, the dream is to play a live show. Um, the way my stuff is recorded, I don't really consider live performances. Then it lets me like overdub as much stuff as I want to. Yeah. So I usually have like a rhythm guitar, a lead guitar bass drums and keyboards for every song so i bet i could probably get it down to just one guitar part but that's something down the road that i would like to do maybe if i get enough listeners or whatever we could i could put together a band 
But for now, yeah, it's kind of hard with the whole one man band thing. Yeah. Um, so I've been trying to get into uh, music licensing. That's kind of one of the things I want to get into is record all these songs and then uh, put them in like music libraries and see if they can be used in commercials or TV yeah. shows or movies. Cause That's there's, a great idea. Yeah. Even though I'm not, I don't write these songs, they're all cover songs. There's something called uh, mechanical licenses, I believe. So even though I didn't write the songs, if somebody uses it, they're using my recording at least. So I get paid for my recording and then I split that with the songwriter. So that's something I'd like to pursue. That was kind yeah. of what I wanted to do in the beginning. But uh, I do want to play live. I just haven't been able to yet. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so so tell me, um, I'm always interested in, I, because there's usually so much to talk about, I don't get to this point in an interview. But I'd like to know um, what it's like and how you came to learn all these instruments and make them sound so good together. You know what I mean? Like, like, like usually yeah. somebody's really good at guitar, but they can kind of make it by on the other, yeah, on the other instruments. But but you seem to be well adapted to all of them. Oh, thank you. I I learned one each one one at a time. I've been playing guitar for twenty years. I've been playing drums for about the same time. I guess you could say I've been playing all these instruments since I was like 14 years old. So I was always in band. I was a percussionist. And then uh, my band director said, hey, I need you to learn drum set. I want you to join the jazz band. So that's kind of why I learned to play drums because my band director wanted me to do it. And that was around the same time I started playing guitar. And then a couple years later, I started taking piano lessons. And then, you know, once you learn guitar, you basically kind of learn bass, right? I mean, it's, it's, they're two in the same. Although I still consider myself to be like not a true bassist, but a guitarist who plays bass. There's kind of a difference there yeah, when you see yeah. like a real <laughs> bass player. You're like, oh, that's a real bass player. I'm a guitarist who plays bass. But um, I've just been doing it for 20 years. And then the past 10 years, I've been teaching myself music recording. I guess you could say that's a musical uh, instrument in itself, you know, software and mixing and stuff. But uh, I've just been doing it a long time, I guess. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, before we go, I, I'd like to know if there's, uh, you know, something you'd like to say or or, or talk about be, be, that I haven't mentioned. Um, I just I love the whole surf rock culture. I've kind of uh, I've always liked surf rock. Yeah. Since I was a teenager, like when you learn how to play venture songs, it's one of the first you know songs I used to learn how to play. But um, these past, I don't know, three or four years, I've really been getting into the whole surf rock culture and as well as the. Uh, tiki culture which they're kind of related they're kind of like if you're into one you're into both so right now i'm just really big into surf culture tiki culture uh tiki bars exotica that whole sort of stuff hawaiian music um i don't know i feel like yeah i'm like 35 years old i feel like uh i don't know if you've ever noticed this if you're into tiki culture but like half the people who are into tiki their name is matt it's just it's just weird like, <laughs> like if if you look around half the people are named matt so i feel like uh i found my niche with this sort of i feel like i've, I've fall uh I've, I've found my uh calling you know with this sort of thing yeah so i'm happy to be part of it i'm happy that uh you were able to you know find me which because i know it's it's hard to find my name but uh, i appreciate you reaching out um it's really cool i've been watching your interviews and it's it's cool because the people who watch this you know they're looking for new surf rock bands. And so I'm happy yeah. that you were able to recognize me and to have me on your uh, YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Well, my, my first instinct is, was to uh, watch your slime tutorials, like the real <laughs> slime tutorials, because I'm like, I want to see what my daughter was watching. Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, I saw surf rock and I'm like, Oh, this is even better. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, but thank you so much, Matt. And, uh, you know, I look forward to hearing more from you and, and uh, downloading some of your music. And, uh, you know, con congratulations on, on uh, putting it all together. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to do, uh, in the future, I'm going to do a rig review. So you guys can uh, watch my, basically what's in this room, what I use to make my music. And uh, right now I'm working on a new EP. It's called uh, Hell is Empty and All the Freaks Are Here, which is kind of a play <laughs> on uh, a Shakespeare in line, which is uh, um, all the... All the devils are here, but I changed it to all the freaks are here. And it's all about um, the freaks and villains of Broadway. So I'm going to have oh, nice. uh, Sweeney Todd. I'm going to have the Oompa Loompa song. 
<laughs> from Willy Wonka, which is just a fun song. Um, gonna do some stuff from Les Miserables, which is you've never heard that in surf rock before. That should be fun. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. So I hope to release it in the next couple months, at least by Halloween this year. So awesome. yeah, just uh, keep an eye out for that, I suppose. Awesome. All right. Well, cool. Well, thank you. I really appreciate meeting you and talking with you. Me too. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> 